I just saw Godzilla minus one in the theater, and I loved it. For me, this is what I want a Godzilla movie to be. Godzilla was scary and just destroyed everything. The characters had simple but straightforward and good arcs. The themes were also very simple but good. There was a little bit of campiness to it, which I think is appropriate for this type of movie. It didn't try to do anything overly complicated. It wasn't overly political or anything like that. It was just a good, fun monster movie or kaiju movie if you prefer. So I want to get into it because there's quite a few things I want to discuss and there's going to be spoilers so just a heads up. I mean if you're concerned about spoilers for a Godzilla movie although obviously Godzilla movies are predictable. I mean you know what you're getting into. I still want to talk about it. So the main plot is Koichi Shikishima. He's a kamikaze pilot who's afraid just to go die for this war so he pretends like his plane is having issues and he goes and lands on a little island where the mechanics are and we see the mechanics being like everything is good to go and then that night godzilla shows up to the island and they all go hide and then the head mechanic tells him hey go get in your plane and shoot it with the gun that size gun can kill anything and he's scared and he goes and sits in the plane and doesn't do it and then Godzilla destroys everything. And this scene was really awesome as an introduction to Godzilla because it kind of felt like a Jurassic Park T-Rex scene where it's like almost a horror movie. And obviously it's brutal, but when you see a Godzilla movie, it's kind of what you want. So he comes to the next day and the head mechanic, Tachibana, is like, you got all these guys killed, screw you, essentially. And also at this point in the movie, this is just a little detail that I thought was neat, is Godzilla is small. Like he's maybe the height of like a two-story house instead of a skyscraper and there's an explanation for this that comes later on but also i really like the look of godzilla in this movie he's like really spiky and like looks rough and like kind of alien like the recent trilogy here it has its own look but he looks a lot smoother and more lizardy and this one i feel like he looks more like a monster and this one's something that's interesting too is sometimes you see a godzilla movie and like the recent american ones godzilla is like restoring balance for the planet and he's kind of like the wrath of the environment and that sort of thing like a more anti-pollution nuclear climate change type commentary and this one he's essentially a metaphor for being the nuke like he's radioactive so like when shikishima is sitting on the beach he starts to see dead fish float to the surface and he's like huh that's kind of weird and it's because godzilla is radioactive so that's an interesting way to do it too because i know it's been done a bunch of different ways by this point because there's so many movies and tv shows and all that so shikishima goes home and his neighbor sumiko yells at him because her whole family died his parents died and she's like why are you alive you were a kamikaze pilot if you had done your job they might all still be alive and the whole city that they live in has been turned to rubble this is like a pretty direct commentary on how japanese samurai culture used to be and like i think it was this way all the way up through world war ii where they just had this kamikaze like it's better for you to die than come home dishonorably type mentality and that's a really big theme throughout this movie because i'm going to jump ahead but the main theme for the end of the movie is kind of living to fight for a future not just fighting to die and just kind of throwing your life away and one of the other characters gives a speech about how Japan has treated its citizens' lives like they're meaningless and just thrown them away. And he wants to win the fight against Godzilla with no deaths. And they really want to value their lives and fight for the future and kind of change the culture. So I'd be really curious to see what an actual Japanese person thinks of this kind of commentary. Because obviously in America, we have stuff that's critical of our past. But I don't know if that's the case for other countries. Obviously in America, we have a lot of immigrants and migration and all that sort of stuff. Everyone's heritage is a little bit different. So I don't think there's quite the love for the history of America that other countries have for their own histories. But that's just speculation. I don't know. I would just be curious to see what the Japanese audience thought of this kind of theme throughout it. The bulk of the story from here on is Noriko, who's this young woman, is carrying a baby and being chased because she stole food. She hands the baby off to Shikishima and he ends up letting her come stay at his place. Because the whole town is rubble, like they're all starving, they're all just trying to get by and rebuild. And he's constantly dealing with PTSD. Noriko is staying with him and they're taking care of the kid. But the kid actually wasn't her kid. She adopted it because the parents were dying during the bombings. So they've all lost their families. And now they've kind of formed this hodgepodge of a family. And that's like the group for the rest of the movie. Along with a couple other people who help with the fighting and that sort of thing. So they, they live together. We get some time jumps and Shikishima takes a job 
deactivating mines that were planted all throughout the war. And Noriko is mad at him because she's like, you need to value your life. And throughout the whole movie, Shikishima is dealing with PTSD, which I think they do a pretty good job the way they handle it. Like he's very traumatized. He has survivor's guilt. He's constantly having nightmares and can't sleep. And it's just an ongoing thing. I thought the way it was done was fine. I thought he had enough depth to be interesting without trying to overly complicate things for a Godzilla movie. So later on, we see the Americans doing a nuclear test, and you don't really know the significance of that at the time. But while Shikishima is out doing this job trying to deactivate mines that are underwater, they're supposed to be kind of buying time with these two little wooden boats for a battleship from Japan to show up to fight Godzilla because they've been tracing its movements because it's so huge. And you see some big wrecked ships and that sort of thing. So Godzilla shows up, and he's way bigger than before. And Shikishima's like, like, what the hell happened? So Godzilla eats one of their boats like right away. And then they throw a couple of mines at him. And they shoot at him with their guns. Because that's how they deactivate the mines is they cut the ropes. So they float to the surface. And then shoot them with a machine gun from far away. This whole scene was pretty cool. And they get lucky. One of the mines goes into Godzilla's mouth. And Shikishima hits it. And he blows it up in Godzilla's mouth. And Godzilla has like half of his face blow off. But it just regenerates. So the battleship shows up just in time to save him, and then Godzilla just fucks it up. And they blast him a bunch. He falls under the surface, and you see this big blue glow, and he shoots like a nuke up through the bottom of the ship from his fire breath. And then they end up getting away, and he ends up being really hurt from all this, obviously. So he goes home, and Noriko's like, you need to talk to me. We've been together for three years at this point. What's going on? So he tells her the whole background and about Godzilla and everything, and she's really upset that he won't like let her into his life even they both clearly like each other they're raising this girl like a daughter but he just says that he can't let his war go because godzilla is out there and he has this survivor's guilt so she gets a job in ginza and says she's going to move out and then shortly after that godzilla attacks ginza so shikishima rushes to go find her and he gets pretty lucky that he does but there's definitely some contrivances throughout this movie they don't really help him for the most part and it's a little bit campy, so I don't really care either way, honestly. So he goes and finds her. Godzilla fucking destroys this city. He's trying to help her run. And Godzilla uses his fire breath and shoots off into the distance. And it's supposed to be a nuclear explosion. But they do the mushroom cloud. It has this big explosion and a backdraft and everything. So when it explodes, she shoves him into an alleyway and she gets blown away. So obviously he's devastated. Somebody else died in his life. He can't handle it. And then we keep going, you know, throughout the movie, they're trying to figure out how to deal with Godzilla. They don't know what to do. He destroyed this whole city. So they come up with this plan to use civilians because of political tension between U.S. and Soviet Union. So it's all his little group who are all former Navy and like a couple hundred other guys. And they were able to requisition some battleships from the government. And like this kind of stuff is like obviously a contrivance, but I also don't know how Japan's government works or what the political environment would have been at the time. And there's obviously the whole monster aspect to it that they had to account for. So either way. So their plan essentially is to use Shikishima to fly a plane to lure Godzilla into this deep part of the bay off the coast of Japan and have Freon come up to like bubble around him and just sink him super fast, like 1500 meters, and then fill these bags with like carbon dioxide or gas and bring him back up to the surface really fast also. So essentially he has to handle this rapid pressure change down and this rapid decompression up because obviously guns don't work on him. And there's this whole thing going on here where Shikishima gets in touch with Tachibana who's pissed off at him and secretly wants to become a kamikaze pilot. So that's kind of what he's doing behind everybody else's back. While they're all hoping that this plan works, he's assuming that it won't work and he's gonna fly into Godzilla's mouth with a big bomb because he saw that the mine did damage. So leading up to this, obviously there's a whole bunch of conversations with his little boat crew who he's deactivating the mines with, where they're like, why didn't you marry Noriko? And he's like, because I can't let my past go yet, and blah, blah, blah. It gets to the point where when he decides to become a kamikaze pilot for their plan, that he wants to leave Akiko, who's the daughter, with Sumiko. She's the neighbor who was mad at him, when her children died and kind of blamed him and he she you know she gets a big envelope full of money and just a note that says take care of her so she figures out what he's doing so they're doing all their revving up for the battle and they're prepping and all that and the whole thing becomes you know japan was 
kamikaze fighting and honor fighting and dying for nothing instead of fighting for a future. So you have this going on with the main group while Shikishima is planning on becoming brave enough to die is how he sees it and kind of get over this guilt of being the only survivor. And they have a line in there where they mentioned that their pilots didn't even have ejection seats in their planes, which I didn't know. I'm assuming that's true. So they go to get started up and Sumiko gets a telegram and she is like, what is this? And she's kind of freaking out because we don't know what it says. I mean, I think it's pretty predictable what it says, but at this point you don't know. So Tachibana comes back and fixes up this special plane for Shikishima. He goes to lure Godzilla out into the bay. They do their plan with the Freon, sink him, float him. Their cranes break because obviously he was, you know, a mile under the surface essentially. And there's this kid throughout the movie who I haven't mentioned yet, but he's part of this, this deactivating the mines crew named Mizushima. And his role is kind of, he's the, like, the young guy who hasn't been to war, but he is eager to go to war. And he's, he's kind of lamenting that he wasn't able to be a part of it and that sort of thing. And he actually says something about it. And Shikishima says, I hope you're joking about that. And kind of grabs him by his collar. And then near the end of the movie, when they're going to their battleships, they tell him to stay behind. And they're like, you know, you haven't been to war. That's something to be proud of. Because obviously all the guys who went to war are a little bit broken. So I thought that was an interesting kind of foil character for them to have put in there. So they're doing their plan and the cranes break and they're like, Godzilla weighs 20 tons or however much it is. Two boats can't pull him. And Mizushima shows up with like 50 tugboats. So they all help and they all pull Godzilla to the surface. And Godzilla's like messed up, but he's not dead. And his breath takes time to reuse, which they made him use it once on empty ships. He kind of has to recharge. And like the way that it shows it in the movie is his spikes on his back all get filled with like this blue lightning charge thing that you see. So Godzilla starts charging up and they're all like, oh, we're going to die. And then Shikishima flies at it and they all realize what he's doing. And he flies into Godzilla's mouth and we see the explosion and they all think he's dead. But obviously Tachibana put an ejection seat into his plane because they had discussed it prior to that. So Godzilla has like most of his head blown off sinks to the bottom they had no casualties and that's kind of the happy ending that they wanted he gets back to the shore and sumiko is waiting there for him and this is a nice callback too because the first time that he comes home when he was supposed to die she like hits him and shames him and calls him dishonorable and this time she's hitting him because she's like why did you try to kill yourself so i thought that was nice so she hands him the telegram uh, he goes to the hospital obviously noriko is alive but she's wounded and that's the end of the movie. They hug, and you see a little black mark up Noriko's neck. So I think it's supposed to be some kind of kind of weird radioactive thing from Godzilla, which I'm assuming is a setup for a sequel. Because then right after that, we cut, and Godzilla's way under the water, and you can see him healing. And the movie's called Godzilla Minus One, so it would make sense to me if it was called just Godzilla. So yeah, that's the movie. It's a really simple movie. I really liked it. I liked the messaging. I liked the portrayal of ptsd and kind of the ramifications of war and just how much it really does just destroy people in towns and because you know you get to see them rebuilding their town throughout the whole movie and then you see another city completely destroyed godzilla is supposed to be a nuke like that's very obvious the way that his fire breath thing works and then the speech at the end they, they directly say that they need to start valuing their lives more and their individuals more and my understanding is that east asian countries are all very collectivist so I thought this was a pretty interesting message for a Japanese movie. And I'd be curious to see what Japanese people think about it. If that's something that they're becoming more individualistic and liberal, liberal in the classical sense of the word, not left wing. Or if maybe this director is just kind of like the outlier. But yeah, I hope that it gets another one. The budget was only like $15 million, which is great because the special effects, I thought it looked good. And a couple of things I thought were interesting were the opening Godzilla scene was very Jurassic Park-ish. And the second time you see him when they're on the little boat, felt like jaws like godzilla kind of swims like at the top of the water you know he looks like a shark he's got his scales and all that there's definitely some minor issues nothing that's going to ruin a godzilla movie for me you know like when godzilla's breath goes off and noriko gets hit she gets blown like 50 feet back so as soon as it happened i was like damn and like the backdraft is enough to knock shikashima out in the alleyway so you know there's like that kind of over the topness Felt very like a 90s action movie where no one's really dead unless you see him die on screen, which, you know, no problem for me. 
And then you always have the stuff like where Godzilla looks like he's standing up in the water. I'm assuming that he just has his tail swishing around under him. And then maybe because he's bottom heavy, he's just kind of bobbing in the water. But it's always just one of those things they put in that I wonder how much thought goes into it. And then like the thing with the young guy bringing all the tugboats, I thought was a little bit cheesy, but I like it. I like what they're going for. And I I really like the whole kind of criticism of just throwing your people's lives away. And I'm not some historical buff or war expert or anything, but it seems to me like historically speaking, this philosophy of just throw as many men into battle as you can and who cares if they die has been pretty prevalent throughout history. And then especially so for the East Asian and Russia, those countries and different cultures. So yeah, overall, this is what I want from Godzilla movies. This is the best one I've seen in my lifetime. Admittedly, I've only seen the 1998 Matthew Broderick one, which is terrible, and then the most recent three out of Hollywood. Godzilla, Godzilla King of the Monsters, and Godzilla vs. King Kong. All of those were okay. I thought the parts with the people in them were really weak, and I actually liked the characters in this movie. And they had enough character stuff and enough Godzilla, I thought it was a good balance. It wasn't too much like Godzilla just destroying everything the whole movie, and it wasn't like we got these bland characters that I was like, God, just get Godzilla back on the screen, please. I thought they handled it really well. And if you like Godzilla and you don't mind subtitles, I would definitely go see it. And for me, the timing couldn't be better because I've been pretty disappointed with Monarch. Obviously, I thought the show was going to be something that it's not, but this was like exactly what I wanted. So definitely go check it out. If you've seen it or if you go see it, let me know what you think. I'm always curious where I fall relative to other people because there's definitely movies that I like that other people don't and vice versa. So if you're here, like and subscribe and all that shit. See ya. Thanks.